Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be tackling a project that I personally am extremely excited about. A DIY NAS. Now you might be wondering why would I want to build something like this. Well, I've been thinking about it for a while. Chrissy and I are both doing video editing. Now, I have two computers, but both of the hard drives are being filled up with storage and a lot of times we need access to the same videos. So a network attached storage would allow us to put all of our video files on that system, but then edit right off of it. And spoiler alert, it's been a bit of a game changer, but not without its challenges. Let's get into it. So you might be wondering, why build it? Why not just get one off the shelf? I think that's an excellent question and definitely something that we should consider. When you look at products off the shelf, they're in the ballpark of like 200 bucks. I think I can do this for less than 100 using some spare parts that I have and a few that I have to purchase. Let me go through the list of parts. I picked up an old Dell Inspiron for 46 bucks off of eBay. It's an i3, 7100 processor, 8 gigs of memory, and a terabyte hard drive and I got this for $46. I had to get a SATA port expansion card for it that cost me about 25 bucks. I had to get an SSD for it so that I could put the operating system on the SSD that cost me about 17 bucks and then some various odds and ends. So all in total I'm at $102. So not quite under the $100 budget. Fortunately for me I had some spare hard drives lying around that I'm able to use in this system. Or is that really fortunate? So when it came to designing and building this system, it actually wasn't that hard. Probably the most challenging thing was where are you going to put all the hard drives? The system itself, that Dell Inspiron, doesn't have any room for any additional hard drives. So I actually had to print that external hard drive enclosure and then route all my SATA and power cables out of the system and power them in that separate enclosure. For the operating system, I went with TrueNAS scale. It just seemed very versatile, like it would fit for this particular application, allowing us to edit right off of the NAS. In addition to that, I'm wanting to get into Kubernetes and playing around with some Kubernetes deployments. And I read that you can run Kubernetes on a TrueNAS scale system. So that's something I'm gonna get into a little bit later, but for that's kind of the reason that I went the directions that I went, again, it, depending on what your use case is and what you're really looking for, building your own NAS may not be the best option for you, but given those factors, this is the route I went with. Setting up TrueNAS scale wasn't super hard, but for somebody like me who has been out of the storage game for years and mostly been writing code, it was a little bit of a challenge to get everything set up. I mean, the last RAID I set up, I think was a RAID 5, so I mean, that tells you how ancient I am. But for this particular one, I watched a few videos, was able to get it set up. I went with a RAID Z2 so that I could have at least two drives fail, which actually was really smart in this particular instance. I have six drives, but they're all more than a decade old, which is not probably what you want to do when you're setting up a NAS system. You probably want to go with some hard drives that are a little bit reliable, right? Uh, so not really what I did there. And almost immediately I had a hard drive fail. So this RAID Z2 allows me to have two hard drives fail before I have data loss. I was able to snag another drive, so I was able to replace that one. So yeah, that's something to consider if you're building your own NAS. You know, don't maybe don't go with a bunch of old hard drives that you've just been collecting over the years, thinking, oh, sometime in the future, I'll build a NAS. So these will come in handy. Yeah, it may not be the right way to go. However, with that additional drive that I was able to add, Crisis was averted. I did go ahead and configure it to upload to my Google Drive once a day, just to make sure that if I did lose multiple drives, I wouldn't lose any additional data. One additional step that I haven't done yet that I think would be wise is you can set up alerts. I could have it alert me in a Slack channel if one of my hard drives fails. And this is beneficial because otherwise, how would I know? So what about performance, right? We're editing our videos right off of the NAS. In fact, this video right here, I'm editing off the NAS. And up to this point, I've been really, really impressed with this performance. I personally can't really see a major difference between editing off the NAS 
and editing locally. So this is going to be a huge time saver for us, as well as it's going to free up a massive amount of hard drive space on both my computers. So far, I am thrilled with its performance and it really was inexpensive because of what I had lying around. So overall, well, how would I... Given that my mic died, I'll go ahead and give you my final thoughts as we watch this epic build montage. Should you build a NAS? Well, I think that all depends on your particular situation. What your needs are. For us, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but honestly, I do believe that if I wasn't going to go the Kubernetes route where I was going to have a little bit of a home server that I could kind of play with, it would probably have been better for me to just go ahead and get an external SSD, share that across my network, and let everybody edit right off of that. It might have been a little bit more expensive to get the kind of storage that I have in my NAS, and, but I could have still set it up to back up to my Google Drive, which would have given me the data redundancy. So it's a give and take. Think about your situation, what your needs are, how much it will cost you overall, especially throughout the years, because I do have to, uh, I have to consider how the power consumption of the NAS across multiple years and weigh all those factors. I hope though, that you have fun with whatever you're building. Until next time, keep building.